Well, good evening, everyone. I hope you're doing well. And this is your Royal Daily News for July 18th, 2022. In Denmark, Her Majesty Queen Margrethe II arrived in the beautiful town of Gostin, located in South Jutland, to begin her annual summer stay at Gostin Slot. Gostin Slot is the official summer residence for the members of the Danish royal family since the late Their Majesties King Frederick IX and Queen Ingrid of Denmark took over the beautiful Slot in 1935. Upon her arrival, Her Majesty was enthusiastically welcomed by hundreds of locals waving the Danish flag, cheering and clapping for their beloved Queen. At the Old Town Hall, Her Majesty Queen Margrethe II was greeted by the Gostin City Council members as well as by the Municipal Director, Mr. Tim Hansen. After a welcoming speech by the Mayor of Gostin, Mr. Eric Laurentin, Her Majesty departed for Gostin Slot. In Rochesvall, Her Majesty Queen Mathilde of the Belgians visited the Catholic Guides of Belgium's Compagnie Cassiope summer camp. According to the Belgian Royal Court, the Compagnie Cassiope, which is a part of the 50th Queen Astrid unit, brings together young people from the ages of 11 through 15, some of whom have mental or physical disabilities, to enjoy various summer camp activities as well as to make new friends. Upon her arrival, Her Majesty was warmly welcomed by various Catholic guides of Belgian scouts, volunteers, and young people attending the summer camp. Thereafter, Her Majesty was given a tour of the camp and participated in several games. At the end of her visit, Her Majesty Matilda was presented with a scarf from the summer camp attendees, scouts, and volunteers as a way to say thank you for spending time with us today. In Brussels, His Majesty King Philippe of the Belgians presided over the swearing-in ceremony of the first president of the Liege Court of Appeal, Mrs. Evelyn La Haye, held at the Palais Royal. In Monte Carlo, their Serene Highnesses Prince Albert II and Princess Charlene of Monaco, accompanied by Prince Albert II's niece, Miss Camille Gottlieb, attended the 73rd Gala de la Croix Rouge Monégasque held at the Place du Casino. Established in 1948, the Croix Rouge Monégasque Charity Galas raises money for various humanitarian activities of the Monégasque Red Cross. Over the years, many famous entertainers performed at the galas, and this year, pianist, singer, songwriter Miss Alicia Keys performed for hundreds of attendees. Last evening in Monacoville, his Serene Highness Prince Albert II of Monaco attended the first summer concert of the Monte Carlo Philharmonic Orchestra held in the Col de Nel at the Palais Princière de Monaco. The concert was held on the occasion of the centenary anniversary of the death of His Serene Highness Prince Albert I of Monaco. The concert, under the direction of Mr. Kazuki Yamada and organized by the Prince Albert I Committee and the Monte Carlo Philharmonic, performed works by two composers, both of whom were friends with the late Prince Albert I. In Madrid, Their Majesties King Felipe VI and Queen Letizia of Spain presided over the delivery of the Premios Nacionales del Deporte 2019 and the Premio Nacional del Deporte Extraordinario 2020 held at Palacio Real El Pardo. The Premios Nacionales del Deporte 2019 recognizes individuals and organizations that either through their direct activity or personal initiative or as participants in the development of sports policy have made an outstanding contribution to promoting or spreading physical sports activities. The Premio Nacional del Deporte Extraordinario 2020 are presented to, quote, athletes who raised awareness about COVID-19 through their jobs and fought against the pandemic, end quote. In Carfilly, Her Royal Highness the Princess Royal visited Educate Training. The company recently received the Princess Royal Training Award. The award and today's visit marks a significant achievement for Educate Training, the leading work-based learning provider in Wales. Contracted by the Welsh Government, Educate Training provides, quote, a high-quality apprenticeships and helps students reach their potential to boost jobs and enterprise in Wales, end quote. 
Meanwhile, their royal highnesses, the Duke and Duchess of Cornwall, and just by the way, when the Prince of Wales is in Cornwall, he is known as the Duke of Cornwall, not the Prince of Wales, began their two-day visit to, well, Devon and Cornwall. The day began in the seaside town of Mousehole with a visit to the Solomon Brown Hall, whilst there the royal couple met with various community groups who used the hall for various events and activities. In 2019, the Solomon Brown Hall received a grant from the Duke of Cornwall's Benevolent Fund. As the heat intensified, the royal couple took a stroll along the harbor where they met with the locals, tourists, and city commissioners. They also visited Webb's Ice Cream Shop. In the afternoon, the royal couple visited Newland Harbor. Whilst there, they visited the Argo Restaurant, which, quote, supports the local fishing fleet by specializing in champion underrated cuts of fish, end quote. The day ended with a meeting with the local fishermen in which they learned about their sustainable fishing practices and met with the owner of Fishy Filaments, an artist who turns old fishing nets into filament for 3D printed objects. In the late afternoon, the Duke and Duchess of Cornwall attended a garden party at Boniac House to celebrate the 70 years of the Duke of Cornwall's rule as the head of the Duchy of Cornwall. And finally, this morning in New York City, the Duke of Sussex gave the keynote address during an informal meeting of the General Assembly on the occasion of Nelson Mandela International Day held at the United Nations. In his speech, the Duke warned the United Nations General Assembly of a, quote, global assault on democracy and freedom, end quote. He also spoke about the recent overturn of Roe v. Wade, a very sensitive topic to say the least, as well as a, quote, havoc of climate change and the horrific war in Ukraine, end quote. After his speech, the 2020 United Nations Nelson Mandela Prize was presented to Mrs. Mariana Vardingo Giannis of Greece and Dr. Morisanda Coyote of Guinea. The Nelson Mandela International Day is a celebration of the late great leader who inspired the notion that, quote, do what you can with what you have and where you are, end quote, thus inspiring a positive change at a community level. If you're interested in watching the Duke's entire keynote address, in the description box below, I will leave a direct link to the United Nations official YouTube channel for you, so you can watch it. And there you have it. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I will be back tomorrow on Tuesday, July 19th, with all the latest royal news. Until then, you can visit me at my website, royalcorrespondent.com, or on Twitter. With that being said, enjoy your Monday evening, everyone, and I wish you all a terrific Tuesday tomorrow. Okay, take care, everyone. Bye-bye.